The African Union says Sudan's military rulers must hand over power to a civilian-led transitional authority within 60 days. But a top official says the council won't be giving civilians majority rule. Instead, they'll consider a power split during the transitional period. Hand over power to civilians within 60 days. That's the message from the African Union to Sudan's military rulers. In a statement, the body said it noted with deep regret that the military had not stepped aside and given power to civilians within the 15-day period it set last month. Sudanese protesters and activists have been negotiating with the Transitional Military Council to form a joint civilian military body. Aimed at overseeing a transition following the ousting of President Omar al-Bashir last month after weeks of mass protests. But all parties are deadlocked over who will control the new council. Opposition groups say it must be civilian-led, and they've promised to maintain a sit-in outside the defense ministry until their demands are met. But the Transitional Military Council has shown no sign of willingness to relinquish ultimate authority. The African Union said the 60 days were a final extension for handing over power and encouraged all sides to continue to pursue a constructive dialogue. Nigeria's outspoken radio host Fatima Ibrahim has been threatened with beheading by Boko Haram, but she still carries on. She's the host of a popular morning show where she tackled a dangerous topic, Boko Haram. Despite receiving death threats, this outspoken radio host has vowed to stay on air. Fatima Ibrahim works in Nigeria's northeast at the Dandal Kura station. She hosts the popular morning show Haki Num Nun, meaning Know Your Right in Kanuri. On the air, she tackles a dangerous topic, Boko Haram. The extremist group has waged a decade-long insurgency which has killed around 30,000 people and forced two million to leave their homes. Over the years, the station has received videotapes and letters from militants, decrying their operations and vowing to behead the women that work there. Despite the danger, Ibrahim remains defiant. I have a passion for it because the radio, most especially the Dandal Kula radio, is a radio which is based to, for the voice of the lectured basin, most especially those people that are affected by the insurgency. The station says it reaches 10 million listeners across Nigeria, Chad and Cameroon. Broadcasting in local languages and dialects, it tackles a range of topics, from the conflict to human rights issues to land laws. Dandal Kura Radio are running a program on peace building and they enlighten people, especially about the insurgency, that they should surrender and embrace peace. And also for those that have not yet engaged, that they should get the right knowledge and choose peace. The station hasn't just built a community through narrating a conflict that's wrecked so many lives but by giving its listeners a voice to share the trauma they've suffered. From just 150 rand in his pocket to dreams of becoming a global cosmetics giant, a Rwandan entrepreneur shares the story of how he's risen from teaching science to owning a business worth over half a million rand. The former science teacher's success story is proof that dreams can indeed become a reality. Shepa Sinshimiu Muranmi always had big dreams, but as a science teacher in rural Rwanda, he was struggling to make ends meet. With just $10 in his pocket, he decided to use his knowledge to open a business, creating a new line of organic cosmetics called Oburanga, or beauty in English. We make sure that the product which we are producing is for Africa especially, and they are natural. The other product, they have, they, they, they have chemicals, some chemicals, and these chemicals can destroy, for example, the, the skin. The plants, including aloe vera and capuchin, are grown in Nshimiu Muremi's own garden. They are dried, crushed, and mixed with oil and water to make soap, antibacterial gels, and shampoos. 
With one bar of soap selling for 50 cents and a bottle of lotion at a dollar, the beauty range is an affordable alternative. And Mary Mukamuhigwa is a big fan. I started using Uburanga products because I suffered from terrible acne and it used to make me feel uncomfortable. In 2012, Cephas gave me a soap to use as a trial and everybody used to laugh because the soap was black and had a strange shape, but it cleared the spots on my face. After that, I started using the lotion from his range of products, which I also used on my daughter who had white patches on her scalp. I used the Oberanga castor oil to treat the white patches. Since starting in 2012, Oberanga has grown into a thriving business worth $40,000 with 20 employees and around 50,000 distributors across Rwanda. Nshimiu Muremi also exports to Democratic Republic of Congo, Uganda, Tanzania and Zimbabwe. Nshimiu Muremi plans to expand the Uburanga line to include toothpaste and hair products. And his ambition doesn't end there. He hopes to one day become a global cosmetics giant. Breaking the world record just a week ago was not enough for this Kenyan marathon runner. Iluwet Kipchoge is planning to make another attempt at breaking the two-hour barrier in the 1.59 challenge. He currently holds the world record for two hours, one minute and 35 seconds. This man is going to try again to break the two-hour marathon. The secret is believing on myself that I can do it. And this man, Britain's richest, is backing him. Probably the greatest sporting challenge that's left, certainly in anything involving endurance or athletics. Eliud Kipchoge holds the current world record of 2 hours, 1 minute and 39 seconds. He managed 2 hours and 25 seconds in his Breaking 2 project on Italy's Monza Motor Racing Circuit in 2017. But the time was not considered official because he used in-and-out pacemakers and a moving drink station, things which do not comply with the rules of athletics governing body. Jim Ratcliffe owns a billion-dollar chemical company, and as a sports lover, he's determined to invest some of his money in backing projects and individuals that inspire him. Elliot is the finest marathon runner with, you know, the world's ever produced, and uh, he's in his prime. He's the only man in the world that can break two hours, absolutely no question about it, or ever has been, frankly. The 66-year-old's the driving force behind the 159 challenge, announced 65 years to the day when Britain Roger Bannister became the first man to run a mile in less than four minutes. The Kenyan world record holder will attempt the sub-two-hour race somewhere in the UK, probably later this year, probably London, and probably September or October. This attempt, though, will again be unratified, as there will be a phalanx of pacemakers who run a number of laps dipping in and out so that they can maintain the phenomenal 2 minute 50 seconds per kilometre pace necessary. With Olympic gold on the track and in the marathon, and with 11 wins from 12 races over the 26.2 mile distance, breaking two hours would appear to be the only thing missing from the CV of a man ranked amongst the greatest his sport has ever seen. I'm going to do it. So my heart and my mind is on 159. Now let's take a look at what's been dominating social media. Many were shocked when the president of Burundi used a Workers' Day event to reward his daughter for behaving well at home. The girl was reportedly awarded alongside senior state officials, farmers and the national football team. That president, Pierre Nkurunziza, gave the girl an envelope of money was seen as a real insult to workers. A Time magazine cover depicting the social divide in South Africa got many pretending to be shocked. The cover shows a suburb in a densely populated informal settlement divided by only a street. Although not surprising, it's a reminder of the inequality that persists. And the British royal baby has finally arrived. Users went onto social media in excitement over the birth of a son to Prince Harry and Meghan, Duchess of Sussex. Harry expressed how over the moon he is. And that was this week's edition of Hashtag Africa. Until next time, from myself, Ropi Wamadzena, and the team, take care.